En waar jullie nu naar gaan kijken is een interview dat ik heb gehad op Skype met Group One Crew. Ik zou zeggen, lay back, relax en geniet. In my automatic feel it's sporadic already had it with the nine to five it's tragic and problem problematic matic system overloading blasting my stereo the temperature is rising so how are you man i'm good got out from the gym i'm here in la um so um you you guys are named group one crew where does the name come from um back When we first started, there was 13 original members. So uh, we all had our own different style. And um, I appreciated that from everyone. So I wanted everybody to stay as individuals. You know, I wanted them to be who they were. So, so we ended up being a group of ones. We didn't want to be meshed together like one look, one sound. We just wanted to be a group of individuals. So that's what we get group ones from so also we serve one god one faith we have one dream so it's one is just a good representation of unity right so, so it, it, it was a group of 13 members how did it become three well a lot of a lot of other ones just kind of like grew out of it they went and did um they did other other things like uh one of the founding fathers me and my boy paul paul is in dominica now doing missionary work Liza's a mom now, like everybody just kind of went their own separate ways and it actually went down from, from it went from 13 to just one, which was just me. Uh, when my manager found me on MySpace and asked me if I wanted to do music and um, he knew of a label that was looking for a, a hip hop group, he asked me if I could put one together and I still remember, you know, Pablo and Blanca from the original. So we just... That's how it happened. So just call them up and it happened. You won the Dove Award for Best Hip Hop Album. Did you expect that? Um, well, it's, it's funny because you never know what is being voted for. Like, if it's like, The sound quality, is it the, you know, the quality of the record? Because I, I can, you know, our, the quality of our record, we can put up against anybody, like Christian or secular, because it's just, it's a great record, sonically, and just in every way, it's just a good record. Mm -hmm. But in all actuality, you know, I really felt Lecrae, you know, Lecrae would take it home just because I feel this year, um, this year was a great year for Lecrae, and he did a lot for, for hip-hop, in general, especially for Christians who do hip hop. He succeeded in one way, we succeeded in another way, but I thought for sure, you know, he would be the one that takes it home. You know, to me, to me, it's a shared, it's a shared one. Him, him and us, you know, in my heart, we shared it. Did you say anything in your acceptance speech about that? Um, no, I don't do well in speech, in the acceptance speeches, man. Every time I get up there, I get nauseous and I, 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 I stutter and I, I shake and you don't understand, like, I'm a, I'm like a public speaker. Like I speak in front of thousands and I don't even get nervous. But for some reason, the Dove Award stage, I just get so nervous, so shaky that I just try to just get in and out. I try to say maybe 20 words and I'm out as quick as possible so that nobody notices that I'm shaking like a leaf. past year what's your biggest life lesson you've learned i think the biggest life lesson i've learned is that when there is nothing in this world too stronger than your mind and deciding to do the right thing i feel a lot of times we as christians make a lot of excuses i being one of them uh making excuses as far as our compromises You know, I compromise because I'm sad. I compromise because I'm lonely. I compromise because I'm a guy. This is how guys are built. So we compromise because this is our, our this is our, our, you know, thorn that we have to live with. Mm -hmm. And then God reminded me that, man, you are a king. You have authority over everything. 
-hmm. You are smart enough to not sin. You just choose to sin because all of us do when our flesh leads us away. And so what I learned was that, man, if I want to be a holy man of God, mm -hmm. I have to choose to be and then just do it. It's, it's mm -hmm. simple. It's very simple. For men, if you struggle with sex and with your girlfriend, guess what? Break up with the chick, delete her phone. Do it in love. Do it in love. Hey, I can't handle myself. Obviously, we're not handling this right. So we can't be together. And I may delete you on my phone so that that way I can detox. You know, you know that's extreme. But some people need that. But don't people don't want to do that because it, it means a total shift in your life. Like the Bible says, cut the right eye. If, there, if your right eye causes you to sin, cut it out. So if Facebook causes you to sin, get rid of it. If the internet causes you to sin, get rid of it. You know, just do it. If you need to get on the internet, you know, get on your wife's freaking computer so that she monitors it. You know, anywhere you go, she's going to know. Get on your, your parents' computer that has all the restrictions on it or put the restrictions on yourself. You know, like there's a lot of things that you can do. And when I realized that I had all the power, that I was letting the enemy just kick my butt, that's when I was like, you know what? Like, you can't beat me, enemy. Like, you are already beaten. It's me who allows you to have victory in my life. No, I let, I let the enemy win. I let people do stuff to me. I put myself in situations. I don't aimlessly end up in a girl's room. Oh, my God. How did I get here? Oh, it was Satan. He put me in the car and he drove me to the girl's house. Now I'm here. Jesus, woe is me. You know, we be giving Satan way too much credit. Just admit it, it was you. You were feeling lonely. You were feeling horny. You wanted to go hook up with a girl, period. Be honest with yourself. And that's where I was at. I was like, dude, you are compromising because you lack vision. You cannot see the promises that God has for you so, that, so, so then you compromise, because I cannot see my wife right in front of me, I think she's so far away. So why not enjoy momentary pleasures until she gets here? But she will never get here if I continue to treat myself like a whore. You know what I'm so it was at that point where I'm like, I am a child of God. I'm a man of God. I have to treat myself like a king. I have to respect myself so that when I do meet the woman that God has for me, she will see that I am treating myself with the utmost respect. And that in turn will allow me to treat her with the utmost respect. Because if I don't treat myself as well as I'm supposed to, there is no way. And this is even biblical. The Bible says you treat someone, you treat your wife like you want to be treated. Love her like you love yourself. You preserve yourself. You'll do anything to make sure you stay alive. So um, I think that's what I learned the most, that the power is in me. That the godly God has given me the power to succeed in this life if I choose it. I have to choose it. I have to want it. I can't sit around and act like I'm the victim because I'm not.